this is a program to check whether the given number is a twisted prime or not. It consists of three steps. First of all, check whether the original number is prime. Step number two, find out the reverse of the number. Step number three, check whether the reverse of the number is prime or not. All the three steps are implemented within this program. Let us see where those steps are implemented and how those steps are going to work. First of all, import java.util.star imports java.util package public class twisted prime declaration of the class public static void main string args declaration of the main function scanner in is equal to new scanner of system dot in creation of the scanner class object int n c1 c2 rev i rem here n c1 c2 rev i and rem are the variables which are declared of the int data type each and every variable has a specific purpose let us see what that purpose is n n is used to accept the input from the command prompt c1 it is used to find the number of the factors of the original number such that if c1 value is equal to 2 then the original number is a prime c2 it is used to find out and it is used to store the factors of the reverse of a number. REV, it stores the reverse of a number. In our example, n value is equal to 167. The reverse of the number 167 is 761. The 761 is going to get stored within the variable REV if n stores the number called 167. REM. It stands for the reminder. It extracts the units digit of the original number. N is equal to 167. Within that, units digit is 7. That 7 is going to get extracted. I is a control variable which is used to run the for loop. This is a logic to check whether the given number is prime or not. In order to check that, a loop is made to run from 1 to n. That means from 1 to 167. If n modulo i double equals to 0, let us see how this is going to work out. If i value is equal to 1, 167 modulo 1. If i value is equal to 2, 167 modulo 2. i value is equal to 3, 167 modulo 3. So on and it goes on till the number called 167. This is because the 167 is the maximum limit as n value is equal to 167. 167 modulo 167. Till here it is going to perform the for loop and if the modulo operator returns 0 then c1 value is going to get incremented. Now, this is a logic to find out the reverse of a number. Why n not equals to 0? Where n not equals to 0 is a condition. In our example, n value is equal to 167. This 167's value should not get deteriorated to 0. If it gets deteriorated to 0, then the loop is going to come to an end. Until and unless that 167 deteriorates to 0, this loop is going to continue. Within this loop, we are going to follow these steps. REM is equal to n modulo 10. This is the step which is used to extract the unit digit of a given number. Here, 
our in our example yan value is equal to 167 that 167 places are as follows within the ones place 7 is present within the tens place 6 is present within the hundreds place 1 is present 167 modulo 10 it gives the result as a 7 where the 7 is the digit which is present within the ones place and it is extracted now step number 2 REV is equal to REV into 10 plus REM. This is used to store the digit which is extracted into the reverse of a number. In the previous example, from the 167, we extracted the digit called 7. The same digit 7 is stored within the REV such that 100 place 0 is present, 10 place 0 is present, 1 place 7 is present. N is equal to N by 10. That means N is equal to 167 by 10. 167 by 10 results in 16. So that 100 place 0 is stored, 10 place 1 is stored, 1 place 6 is stored. Now this is the logic to check whether the reverse is prime or not. For that, a for loop is made to run from 1 to REV. That means in our example, N value is equal to 167. So, 167, the so reverse of a number is 761. So, the for loop is made to run from 1 to 761. If REV modulo i double equals to 0, that means this is going to work as follows. When i value is equal to 1, 767, 761 modulo 1, I value is equal to 2, 761 modulo 2, I value is equal to 3, 761 modulo 3, so on and it goes on and finally when I value is equal to 761, then 761 modulo 761. If that modulo value returns 0, then C2 value is going to get incremented. Now, this is the logic to check whether the number is a twisted prime or not. If C1 value is equal to 2, this implies that the original number is a prime number. If C2 value is equal to 2, this implies that the reverse of a number is prime number. C1 is equal to 2 and C2 is equal to 2. This signifies that both the original number and the reverse of a number are primes. If both are primes, then it signifies that it is a twisted prime and the same is printed by using the system dot out dot intelligence statement. If that is not the case, then it is not a twisted prime and because it is not the twisted prime, the same is printed by using the system dot out dot println saying that system dot out dot println not a twisted prime. And with this, the program ends.